on the line, we've been talking in the, in the previous hour about how do we, how do we bring back about a wealth tax in the United States that extends beyond just uh, the wealth tax that middle class Americans pay. I pay property tax on my home. Uh, Jim down in Texas pays a property tax on his car. Uh, you know, th this is crazy. You know, middle class people are paying wealth taxes, but uh, Howard Schultz pays nothing on his money bin. Uh, you know, <laughs> shouldn't he? So anyhow, we've been talking about that and uh, continuing the conversation about economics broadly. Dr. Richard Wolf is with us, the economist, the co-founder of Democracy at Work. Democracyatwork.info is the website. He's the author most recently of Capitalism's Crisis Deepens, Essays on the Global Economic Meltdown. R.D. Wolf with 2Fs.com, also his other website. You can tweet him at Prof. Wolf, as in Professor Wolf. Uh, Professor Wolf, welcome back to the program. Thank you, Tom. Glad to be here. So I noticed that when the Fed started tightening uh, the money supply, started raising interest rates uh, about, a year to, about a year ago or so, a little more than a year or so, uh, a year ago, that uh, the stock market slowed down and then kind of went into reverse. Donald Trump comes out and says, this is all because the Fed isn't, uh, you know, is, is raising interest rates. And, uh, you know, uh, the, 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 the Chairman Powell needs to be to grovel at my feet and, and, and stop this. And then uh, over the last couple of weeks, uh, Chairman Powell came out and used some very specific language here, um, said, and, and I quote, uh, we are going to be patient about interest rate increases. And, and he also, he says, we're going to remove forward guidance. In other words, we're going to stop explicitly signaling that rate increases are coming. And some are reading this to, to, as him saying that, in fact, there will be no more rate increases, at least for a couple of years, at least as long as Donald Trump is president, which, of course, is what Trump wants. A, is that you know a reasonable assessment of what's going on? B, if the Fed doesn't raise interest rates above 2%, that, doesn't that knock out our ability, the Fed's ability anyway, to deal with a serious recession, which is genuine, generally considered inevitable? And C, if so, how does this, is this a naked political cave on the part of Powell to Trump? And how will that play politically? I mean, if he can keep the stock market up until Trump runs for re-election, does that mean that right after that, we're going to see the world's worst crash? as soon as a Democrat becomes president in 2020. Uh, I, I realize there's a lot to unpack there, Dr. Wolf, but go for it, please. All right, I will try. <clears throat> Number one, um, yes, you're absolutely right that the purpose of slowing down the increase in rates or being patient, if that means no more rates, is caving in. But it is not just caving in to uh, President Trump, although it's partly that. It's also caving in to pressure from the business community and particularly from the biggest businesses whose stocks trade on the market. Because as you rightly pointed out, the minute the Federal Reserve started raising interest rates to deal with the enormous overhang of new money pumped into the economy to offset the 2008 crash, the minute the interest rates started going up, the stock market started having problems. And the reason for that, people should understand, is that big players in the stock market use borrowed money. They have to pay interest on that money, and if it becomes more expensive to borrow the money, which is what rising interest rates mean, they will not play in the stock market because the risk becomes too expensive relative to the chances of gain. So it was caving in both to the president and to big business and the stock market that they put the brakes on the rising uh, interest rates that they had been rise, raising gently, but for a, a year, a year and a half now. Add to that the slowing global economy, particularly big problems in Europe and now significant slowdown in China, partly, by the way, also the result of the Trump administration, and you have enough negative factors that raising interest rates would add to the risks of a recession or make a recession that happens anyway even worse. So if you put all those factors together, that was more than enough uh, to get Mr. Powell and the members of the board, uh, the Federal Reserve Board, uh, to cave in. That's the first part. Okay. The second part is it is very good news for Mr. Trump because if you raise interest rates, you make it more expensive to use your credit card, uh, to buy a, a home with a mortgage, uh, to buy a car with your payments. And so 
the the fact that they raised them was slowing all those markets down, and that would hurt uh, people's pocketbooks, and they would blame the president, as people often do. So it's not good for him to have the rising rates. It's much better for him either to stop the rise or to get the rates uh, to come down. And finally, you are also right. I, I guess you get an A today, Tom. Uh, <laughs> you are also right to uh, foresee that you're stalling things off, accumulating debts that people cannot pay, sets the terms for, sets the basis for a humongous crash uh, once the election is over, once the pressure is off, et cetera, et cetera. Um, we, one of the reasons the Federal Reserve over the last year and a half raised interest rates, which they said, was because they noticed that the low interest rates they had had since 2008 had led governments and businesses to borrow historically unprecedented amounts of money. And households. Creating a great deal of risk that a downturn would lead to a cascade of unpaid borrowing. And to stop that and to now give another two years of a free ride at low interest rate does indeed and should make people much more nervous than they even were when the current upswing in interest rates was begun a year and a half ago. So we're looking at the crash of 2020 being one of epic proportions if all of this uh, speculation and math and whatnot is right. That's right. And it means you're, you're facing again one of the many dysfunctional aspects of how we run American capitalism. We create a, a president and a political party whose horizon is the next election and who will, as we have seen over and over again, subordinate longer term uh, conditions for the economy and for the mass of people to the short term uh, prospects of their uh, electoral strategy. That is a very dangerous way to run your society and while it can get you you know, over the difficulty this time and that time, it's only a matter of time before this happens in a way that can't be fixed afterwards, or at least not without massive suffering, even exceeding what we saw in the wake of 2008.